Carson Beck is strapping it up in Athens for 2024. He wants round two with the Bulldogs and a shot of winning a national title. So what does this mean for the future of Georgia going into a new version of the SEC? And more importantly, what does this do to Beck's draft stock for 2025? Let's talk about it. If you are new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, and I talk college football daily. So if this is the type of content you enjoy, plus coaching searches, anything going on with the transfer portal, national championship news, and a bunch of other nonsense, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below because we're on the race to 1,000 then 10,000, then 500,000, and ultimately 1 million. And ladies and gentlemen, we will get there at some point. So continue to tell your friends, your family, mortal enemies, best of bros, Georgia fans, and college football aficionados everywhere about this channel. Give me a follow on social media, at Mr. Cole Thompson. I call it Twitter. You call it X. Elon can call it whatever he wants. That way, the conversation of college football never has to stop flowing. Carson Beck's return to Athens is massive for a variety of reasons. For starters, you get stability at the quarterback position. There's no more second guessing about what this offense could look like with Gunnar Stockton running the show, adding in a transfer portal quarterback, whoever takes over as QB1 in 2024, because you know what you're getting back. A guy who can sling the football around the yard, consistent as all hell when it comes to completion percentage, able to find the end zone inside the red zone with his legs, and able to average roughly around 36 points per game. That's a good start line and a base for what George is trying to implement next year. And also, now entering a brand new version of the SEC with a daunting schedule in, at hand, you have stability, but more so continuity. That's the key element here, is continuity. You don't have to worry about what are your next quarterback's strengths and weaknesses. You already know what's at display. And another year in the system with Mike Bobo as the OC, you're only going to enhance your production. And the production this past year, pretty damn well. Over 3,700 passing yards, 20-plus touchdowns, a completion percentage roughly around 72%. There were times where Beck looked like the second-best quarterback in the SEC, only behind Heisman Trophy winner Jaden Daniels. And then, more importantly, you look at Beck's status. Beck going into next year will have the keys to the kingdom in Athens. Everyone already trusts what he can do, what he can bring, what he can provide for this offense. But also... The national news is going to be paying full attention to him because of what he did this past season, leading Georgia to an undefeated regular season finish, taking Georgia to the SEC championship. People will put him on watch as QB1 going into 2025. And make no mistake, he's at least earned the right to be in the conversation. Because this year, everyone knows who's going at the top. Everyone knows who is the runners to take over for first place. Caleb Williams, Drake May. Caleb Williams, Drake May. And even then, you have the conversation, well, who's QB3? Beck falls in line there, and I can guarantee you that if he talks to draft analysts and scouts across the country, they'll all say, you're good enough to be in the NFL, but we don't know where you reside. Are you better than Jaden Daniels? Are you better than Michael Penix? Are we going to put you above Bo Nix or other quarterbacks that potentially could enter the draft and be a part of a historic class? Or you return next year, and there's questions everywhere when it comes to quarterback. Doesn't mean there aren't good passers that could make their name in the NFL. Cam Ward being one. Riley Leonard being one. Dylan Gabriel being one. Quinn Ewers another. But proof of concept, proof of production, and also the stat lines kind of backing up. Carson Beck's absolutely going to be the front runner to be QB1 hanging in 2025. So your draft status already raises, I would say, at least one round, if not more. You already are now the face of college football when it comes to the quarterback position or one of the multitude of faces. And you have an opportunity to lead Georgia back to the promised land. There's a reason why he wants to come back. It's not a one and done. And it could have been. Absolutely. He could have easily said, I did my job. I got to an undefeated regular season. I'm content with where I sit. I want to go pro. I want to take that next chapter of my life. And I want to be a part of a historic draft class. Or more importantly, the reason why an NFL team is prospering in 2024. But instead, he realizes, I sat out. I waited, I bided my time, I saw the opportunity of what I could be here, a legend in this city. I want him to have that opportunity. One more swing, one more go around. Stetson Bennett got two tries to win a national title and he succeeded. I want at least one and I want to shut down and silence the critics. I'm just as good as any other quarterback that's walked through this room. And on paper, he could be. There's a reason why he was one of the most sought after quarterbacks when he was coming out of high school. There's a reason why everyone wanted to see what he was able to do once he was given the title of QB1 following G-Day. 
everyone wanted to see Carson Beck take those next steps, and now he has. But the best part is it's only going to get better. The playbook going to open up more. The consistency going to be there. The repetition, the rapport, the chemistry, all that. Locked, loaded, throw away the key. We're good going into 2024. And then you look at the schedule. Everyone wants to talk about Georgia having a cupcake schedule this past year. And the good news for anybody that was a season ticket holder, you kind of got your money's worth at times. Top 10 matchup against a team like Missouri. Top 10 matchup against a team like Ole Miss. Top 15 matchup, I mean, top 20 matchup against a team, even though you had to go on the road, against Tennessee. Georgia Tech, good game. Alabama, SEC championship. You got a good schedule at the end of the day. Nobody's questioning what Georgia's facing up against in 2024. And I'm not talking about a neutral site location and your home away from home in Atlanta against Clemson. No, I'm talking about the SEC. It is a tall task to get through this juggernaut of a schedule and come out the other side unscathed. Trips to Alabama, trips to Texas, an away, I mean, a neutral site location against Florida, an improving Ole Miss team where you get to go play in Vought. I mean, guys, you win that schedule. You go to the SEC championship, you win the SEC, and then you're a first place squad that is getting a bye week in the college football playoff that's now expanded to 12 teams. Who's doubting you? Who's saying that if you put up similar numbers, over 3,700 passing yards, over 30 touchdowns, and a completion percentage around 75%, who's saying this kid can't make it in the NFL? You return your offensive coordinator, you return your defensive coordinator, you return your head coach, and you return your starting quarterback. Georgia has all four corners of what is needed to be a successful program back in action for 2024. And with this schedule, you win. No more second-guessing the Bulldogs. Oh, they're a powerhouse program. Oh, they're a team that can win it all. And to be fair, put Georgia in the college football playoff right now. Vegas would love to because if they would tell you straight up, like I will tell you, they can win a title. Nobody I think out there is doubting those in Athens that they could hoist up a third national championship in three years with the roster in place. And more so, they're going to add in more talent. Yes, you're losing names to the portal, but the portal giveth and the portal taketh. And you can take names out. You can add in premier pieces, a wide receiver, a running back, a defensive back, a linebacker, good young up-and-coming players. And Kirby Smart's not going anywhere. Glenn Schumann and Will Muschamp aren't leaving anytime soon. So now that all these players are back in motion, all these names are back in the saddle for Athens. And your quarterback, who's already have a relationship with a lot of young players, already has that repetition and understanding of what Bobo wants. Yeah. I would be banking a lot on Georgia to be one of the best teams in the SEC next year. I'd be banking on them to make the college football playoff, and I would be banking on them to win it all. They have the quarterback. They have stability. They have consistency. They have everything going their way. And if Beck continues to improve, we're going to be talking about him like he is QB1 of 2025. Big-time get for the Bulldogs. Big-time get for Carson Beck to return. And a big-time wrench for any team in the SEC thinking, oh, next year I'll take down Georgia. Now. Georgia saw the fire, and they're only getting warmed up. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.